Good day guys, Austin here, and in this video today, it's an exciting one, I'm going to be showing you how to rename bin and Q files. Now, first off, what is a bin and Q file? Well, let me fill you in my little friends. A bin and Q file is basically an image of a disk. So let's put this into layman's terms. Uh, say for example, I was to pop down to my local supermarket, buy myself a game. If I was to bring that game home, put it into my computer, it would give me some kind of uh, files, folders, programs or something I could see on the disk. So when I put it in, it would load up and it would show me loads of files and folders on the disk. That is not what an image file is. An image file is basically a picture or an image of the actual disk, not the programs and files that's on it, although it does contain those. Um, so what that's good for is um, duplicating the disk over and over, fooling the computer into thinking that you actually have the disk, or uh, making copies of it basically. Um, it keeps it as its raw file format. So say for example me, I like to use it for um, playing retro style games so I can pretend to the computer that I actually have the disc for that game so I don't need to store all my discs over and over and over I can keep them in my boxes in my uh, attic and I can just load them at free will willy nilly <laughs> so an image is basically an image of the disc not the files and folders that's within it so they come in various different formats one of which, which is very popular, is the bin and Q format. So let's actually have a look at the bin and Q format and show you how to rename it. Okay, first off, um, they will more than likely, as you download them, always come in some kind of compressed format. So as you can see here, I've got Space Ace, it is for the Sega CD. And what I'm going to do is rename the bin and Q file from within it. So first off, I need to extract it. Uh, let's extract here. This will give me the actual raw files from within it, which again will be bin and Q format. Let's just sort itself out. There we go. Okay, so open up the file of folder, and as you can see, I've got a, a what is this? Is this a Q file? Yep. Dot Q file, and this should be the dot bin file. And this is an extra file that the maker of this decided to put in there but these are the ones that I'm concentrated in because these are the ones that we're going to be using so first off the bin file that's basically the binary file now let's get a better view of this view uh, details okay so now we can see the details of the files um, there you go there's a bin format and there's a Q format as you can see, the bin file is considerably a lot larger than the Q file. That's because all the information and the raw data, the binary information from that image that we took from the disk or that somebody else took from the disk is in here. So I've got 300 plus megs for this example. And as you can see, the Q file is only one kilobit. One kilobit, could you imagine? So basically, all the information is held here. However, to tell the computer how to translate it, it makes what it's called the Q or the Q sheet. Uh, and this tells it all the audio tracks uh, and all the information that the computer needs to be able to translate the binary file. So although it comes in two separate files, it's actually only one file working together as one. <laughs> you normally don't get one without the other. Okay, so what we need to do is rename it. Now, common sense would dictate that if I was to just rename it, as I'm going to do now, because I want to change it from this big long name into just Space Ace USA. Um, I would do this to both of them because they were both working together, so I'd rename them both. However, this still would not work because within the Q file, it holds the information for the bin file. And a part of that information is the actual name of the bin file. So by changing the name of the zip file, by changing the name of the actual files within it, the bin and Q, that would not still enable this to work. What we actually have to do is open up the Q file. So highlight this open it up now if I was to take it at whatever the computer thinks it is in my case it thinks it's some kind of media file which it is however I cannot 
edit it as it is. What we can do, however, is edit it with either Notepad or Notepad++ or something that's along those lines. No, I don't want to upgrade. I want to use the standard version, thank you. And there we go. There's the information that's held within this uh, Q file in order for us to, well, in order for the computer to work the bin file. So it's telling us that there's two tracks on this bin file or within this bin file and there's the data it needs in order for it to translate it. And as you can see on the top line it says file space ace USA and it's got the original name of the bin file that was there. What we need to do is rename this file to match the one on the outside so that when we run or use this game or image or whatever it is that you're using it matches the ones on the outside also and that's it that is it that is easy as it is now there are uh, obviously this is the manual way of doing it and to be honest hang on but first off before we do anything else save it because if you were to press X now and exit out of it it would go back to its other setting before so now when I open this again using notepad plus plus it's always there okay so there are various programs out there that do this for you and to be honest they are kind of useful the problem is that I do not trust them uh, don't get me wrong because they're not gonna blow up my computer or anything like that however uh, for example I use well I need to rename my games now I don't just get one or two games I get thousands and thousands of games because that's how many I own and that's how many backups I want to use um, if I'm renaming an entire collection let's say for example uh, the PlayStation collection which is you know nigh close to 2,000 games um, that means <laughs> that if I sit there and let my computer rename them all day which is a good thing because it's doing it on my behalf that means that I have to trust every uh, different change, every file format, every name change and everything along those lines. I have to trust it and if it messes it up somewhere along the line I don't know where, I don't know which file and that's the problem with doing this automatically using um, you know, programs to do it for you. It's okay to do it here and there but if you're doing this for huge collections I would say even though it's very time consuming do it yourself. So, yeah, exit out of here. I'll show you anyway. This is the best one I think that's out there at the moment, the Hyperspin Q Renamer. Um, it shows you all the different uh, procedures that they've gone through, all the problems. However, each time I have used this, I have always had some kind of error with one of my games. And the problem is that that's the game that I um, pick. You know, after renaming thousands of games, I don't want to go back and test every one of those thousand games. I would actually sit there and do it myself one by one manually to know that I've got peace of mind that it is working. And to be honest, there's no. Most of the time when you're doing this, you would pick a collection which is as close to your naming convention as you have in the first place. So then when you do rename them, you're only renaming a certain selection of those games and not the entire collection. So, yeah, I've probably confused you more than actually taught you anything today. But that is how you change the Q files uh, to work, basically. You have to rename the, not just the zip file, not just the actual bin and Q files themselves, but the actual, um, the, the actual Q file itself within. <laughs> God, it's confusing. Okay then, so before I confuse you anymore, thank you very much, guys. I hope that's helped at least one person in the world today. And please subscribe, like, share this bountiful set of knowledge. And I wish you all a happy day. <laughs> Laters, guys.